In all of the post-war recessions, I think there have been 10 altogether, we have either extended or expanded unemployment insurance. We did in the last, for example. Right. That's not in this package. If we appear to be in or approaching a recession, is this still an open issue with the administration? Are you still negotiable on the desirability of having unemployment insurance extended? Mr. Chairman, what I've said is that unemployment is the last number is 4.9 percent. So it would be, in, in, in my judgment, it would have been a serious mistake when we've never extended it when un unemployment was, uh, you know, the lowest it's ever been is 5.7 when we extended it. So what I've said all the way along is I, I don't expect to see us there, but if the economy becomes worse than we've when we projected, then I think this is something we all should discuss together. It's a it's something we should we should discuss and take up at that time. Fair enough. Thank you. Uh, looking at the budget in particular, you heard my opening statement. We've got some real concerns with what's in the budget. Senator Gregg, the ranking Republican on the Senate side, said this is not a real budget because there are cuts proposed, for example, that have been proposed repeatedly in the past and have gone nowhere and they're not going anywhere now. So to represent that these cost reductions are going to be achieved is to defy history. But in addition to that, looking specifically at the budget, war costs after next year are omitted altogether. Indeed, the level of expenditure for the base budget, defense budget, from 09 onward goes down in real terms, which I don't think is going to happen. But in addition to that, it includes only $70 billion, nothing thereafter for next year. Under cross-examination, Secretary Gates yielded and told Senator Levin last week his guess would be maybe $170 billion, which is off by $100 billion, the plug that they put in the budget. And why you've got war costs, supplemental costs understated as to the alternative minimum tax, unless you fix that tax and adjust the thresholds, it'll apply to middle income taxpayers for whom it was never intended. Republicans don't want that to happen. Democrats don't want that to happen. But this particular budget assumes that after next year, the AMT will be in full force and effect, taking from middle income as well as upper bracket taxpayers. Do you think that's any way to put a budget together? I mean, you've done it repeatedly, not just at Treasury, but at, uh, at Goldman Sachs. I mean, we've got a variable here of a couple of hundred billion dollars that we can immediately point to. Let me say, and this doesn't, I'm not making this about, about our budget, because I will defend it in any of the issues you want to raise, but I will just say in general, uh, whether it's the budget, and with all due respect, you put together here, you know, whether any administration's budget, budget making and government is a, d defies some of the principles we, we, we see in the private sector. The whole way pay go rules work where, you know, people I have to keep reminding me what goes in and, and, and discretionary spending doesn't apply and, you know, you, it's hard. But the, the one thing I will say that, that is a positive in, to me, there are just two huge principles that are just, the, 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 you know, that are just key. Well, well, first of all, one, 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 one positive thing, then I get to the principle. The, the positive is that we've been wrong, everybody's been wrong in terms of the rate in which revenues are coming in. So the, the, the fact is revenues have been coming in ahead of projections and and our, our fiscal deficit at the end of this last year was was 1.2 percent of GDP. So that is that's something we can all be grateful for. You know, when, uh, whatever the political arguments are on both sides, we can be grateful about. But you wouldn't advocate extension of uh, leaving the AMT unfixed as to middle income taxpayers. No, what, what, now I'll get to that in a minute. But I'm saying the other thing is the, the the entitlements are the huge issue, which you know and you and I have talked about. Yeah. So now let's get to the AMT. Um, with, with, with AMT, the, the other thing, again, all it, j just the one thing we should all do, because it's, we have it in the, in the budget and the revenues are in the budget, we should all just get that done this year soon so we don't torment the American people or have, have there be the uncertainty. Now, in looking at the other, 
uh, looking at the AMT, I look myself in the mirror because I say we've got those revenues in the, in, in the budget, they're very transparent, and, and we say that this is a major issue and we gotta do something about it. You mentioned, I've never said we need to do something about it on a revenue neutral basis. What I've said is uh, on this, that we need to look at this, this is unacceptable the way it is, and when we look at this, we need to think about, first of all, what percentage of our economy should be taken up by taxes. So that's one thing we want to look at. Some people, uh, uh, so some people want to raise taxes to pay for it, but I think we need to look at it and say what percentage, and then we need to look at it in terms of the entitlement issue and what we see staring us in the face there. So the only, that when, when you, you said in your uh, initial statement, no one, and I don't mean to sound defensive, uh, but n no one in this administration had tried to deal w w with this issue. At least I kept, you know, for a year I said, please, let's come to the table, both sides, no preconditions, let's talk about entitlements. And I was thinking you know, about the AMT in, 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 that, in, in that context. And I got tired of playing solitaire. And so the, and so the, I, I will say to you, we, we do have this AMT uh, question, and we, we need to resolve that. And, uh, and, we've, and we got the entitlements. And I, 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 I do agree with you that the cost of the war is going to be greater, and everyone knows that. No one said anything other than that, that that, that $70 billion was a plug figure. And, that will be filled in later, so. Just quickly, these problems are such magnitude that they're gonna to have to be taken in sequence. I don't think we can resolve them all in one fell swoop, one great big package, and hope to pass it on the House or Senate floor. And I think the, the hurdle that comes first is debt service. It's truly mandatory. It cannot be changed. It's obligatory and has to be paid. And on our side, we wouldn't want to make concessions as to the other entitlements, only to find that then the continuing deficits uh, mount up national debt, which has to be serviced and paid as a, at first to the, uh, to the detriment of these other programs. So that's, that's, that's just why I was pushing some solution on the budgetary front as the, as the first step yeah. towards entitlement reform. Yeah, I got you.